Hey, so Cindy Hayton here, and I wanted to bring you a Monday uh, Mortgage Minute with, uh, I invited Frank Cotto, the president of Lincoln Lending here today to join me to answer some questions that I had that people are asking me. So, hey, Frank, how you doing? Hey, Cindy, doing good. How are you? Good, good, good. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are, are looking at this and trying to figure out long haul some, you know, maybe financial strategies around the equity they might have in their mortgage. Um, less about buying and selling, but more about, you know, we hear about different things like, um, you know, uh, forbearance and, and refi and interest rates. And again, it's just hard, hard to know, which is what I love working with you because you always give me kind of the straight scoop. So maybe if we just take a minute and talk about how have things changed in the last few weeks as we've gotten, you know, into the coronavirus and the markets reacting, give us an update of what you've seen change. Um, first, let's just kind of get people up to speed on something they might have, you know, heard or thought before and, and you know, what's different. Got it. Thanks, Cindy. Um, so the probably most important thing to know is that the banks are tightening on guidelines right now. Um, the most common thing that we're seeing is that uh, most banks have increased their minimum credit scores. Uh, for instance, if the bank was allowing a 600 or 620 on their FHA and VA deals, a lot of them have moved them up to 660 and 680 minimum credit score. Um, they've tightened on their, their debt ratio guidelines. If they were allowing you to be over 45%, now they're saying you have to be under 45 so they're doing some things to protect themselves in the long run, uh, basically to increase the quality of business that they're doing during the downtime right now. Um, I say downtime and in, in, in application volume is, is actually way up. You know, I know from your side, supply is low, demand is high. Um, besides the banks tightening on the guidelines, it, it's overall a, a really strong market right now. And, and I'm seeing that anyone applying uh, right now is a very well-qualified buyer. It's somebody who's serious and that they want to be uh, into a house or, or into a, a refi or something like that. Um, so there's not a lot of tire kickers, uh, which is good news for sellers who are thinking about getting off the fence and listing right now. Um, you brought up equity lines. If you want me to touch on that real quick. Sure. Um, I don't offer equity lines uh, through Lincoln Lending Group as, as a standalone product. We'll do them as a combo mortgage, which, which I'll get to in a second about why, why that's good when people are looking at jumbo loans. Um, but equity lines, what happened years ago back in the financial uh, crash in the late 2000s was that banks did the same thing. They were getting real tight on guidelines. And what they did with equity lines is they froze them. Um, I have not seen any banks do that yet, but I will say as some advice to all of our listeners, I use my equity line for real estate investing, as you know, you know, I'll sometimes buy a flip or something like that, or, you know, some sort of investment using my equity line instead of my liquid cash. Um, I went ahead and drew all the money off my equity line when all this started happening a few weeks ago. Again, I don't want to scare people. I haven't heard banks saying they're going to freeze them or anything, but knowing the experience we had 10 years ago, I think if you have equity in your house, um, it wouldn't hurt if you already have an equity line to go ahead and borrow the money and put it in your bank. Now, downside to that is you're going to pay interest on it. So you're putting this money in your bank, you better, you know, have a plan for it or an investment. The only reason to do that is if, if you use it for reasons like flipping or something, big investments that you want to have the money available. Um, if you're going to get a brand new equity line right now, banks were lending 89.9%, basically 90% of the value of your house. Now they've dropped down to 85 and some banks have dropped down to 80. So they're they're tightening the, um, the guidelines on how much money that they will lend somebody from an equity perspective because of the uncertainty right now in the market. With the rates being down in the market with, um, you know, the treasury and all that kind of stuff, that still, though, is a pretty low interest rate compared to maybe if families have lost a job or they're, you know, they're worried about getting through this process. I mean, I think it's like in, still like in the threes and fours compared to a credit card. I mean, it would be a much oh, yeah. smarter decision than putting it on a line of credit, don't you think? Absolutely, L lower payments, longer amortization, interest only payments available. And, and don't forget all that money that you pay in interest on the equity line on your primary is tax deductible compared to uh, what you're gonna do on a credit card. So I, I liked your idea we spoke about before the call on, could you use an equity line to help yourself through these times? Absolutely. Um, you can contact Cindy or myself. We both have good contacts, even though yeah. I don't do standalone equity lines, we will help you guys out. You're, you're welcome. Um, you know, you could text me, you could call my cell, you could do whatever you want to do. And I'll, I'll, I'll point you in the right direction of who to talk to to get one. But 
you, we brought up that idea because the banks are not really helpful right now. I know you made some calls. I made some calls to see what the banks were doing on uh, for forbearances. And I think we found the same thing, that they're not really doing anything special. They're telling you, uh, yeah, we're not going to have you make a payment for three to six months. But when that's done, you owe the entire balance. Yeah. So if you don't have money now, how are you going to have money in three to six months to pay the whole thing off? Right. Um, and, you know, the thing that I think about forbearance that you and I, you were bringing up to me that I think is important for people to think about is if they're in a position where they think they will or might want to refinance, if they do the forbearance, even as a, uh, you know, a, a proactive step, they can't refinance when they're in forbearance. So it kind no. of messes that up. So even though it doesn't mess up your credit and they're not supposed to report it, you know, you really as a family want to have some good advice about what are your best steps. And, that, and obviously that's something that you guys do great. I mean, whether it's HELOC, whether it's refi, whether it's, you know, those other things, forbearance, you know, that, that kind of resource is important to get good information. Cause I do know that when we were back in 2008 and the market dropped, you know, a lot of people had bad information and made bad decisions that, could have been a better outcome for them. They just didn't ask the right people. Right. And, you know, then once you've done it, you know, just like the same thing, if you want to refinance, you know, you need to do it before you put your home on the market because it, then you can't. So those kind of, you know, tips and tricks working with people like us that have been doing this for a while can certainly save people a lot of, you know, their regretter muscle of like, dang, I shouldn't have done that. So yeah, the forbearance is, is not really a great plan. I mean, it make, it would make more sense if you have the equity would to take out equity to help yourself through these times and pay yourself back and mm -hmm. make that really small payment. I mean, I would even recommend somebody borrowing money on a credit card um, to do, to pay the mortgage. It sounds crazy, but it'd make more sense because in the end, you, if you miss any mortgage payments, you're, you're going to lose the ability to buy another home, to do another mortgage, or to do a refi, where even though you, know, you may miss a credit card payment, um, it's just going to affect your credit score. It's not going to stop you from getting a new mortgage loan, like a missed mortgage payment. So be very careful with the forbearance thing. I, I really wouldn't do it unless you're in a lot of trouble. And, and I would even look into a refinance uh, before forbearance. A lot of people don't know this. Here's a little tip for everybody. When you refi, if you set it up properly, you can skip two months mortgage payments. Right. So right there is a, you could say a, a free forbearance and then you don't start for the third month. So you're essentially getting yourself 60 days and you're also getting a refund of whatever your current escrow account is, which in a lot of people's cases could be, you know, a couple thousand dollars. So you've got three months right there. If you can uh, do a refi, even if you don't do a cash out refi, even if you refi to shorten your term or lower your payment, or maybe it's cash out. Right. Um, but that, that's a better idea uh, than a forbearance unless you have a plan to be able to pay it. But then again, if, if you got the plan to pay it, why can't you pay it now? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that um, you were telling me is that not only the thing about the forbearance, you got to realize um, that you have to pay it at the end of it. And, and I think the federal government gave, us, gave them three months. So everybody's kind of, you know, from what I'm hearing and that what I've sort of called and seen is three months is what they're saying. But at that same time, part of your mortgage payment is the escrow for taxes and insurance. So you need to make sure that depending on where the taxes and in, you know, in, in Florida, we put or in Pinellas County, we pay in arrears. Other people may pay differently, but so ours is not at this point due, but insurance can be whenever you is anniversary of your uh, property. Okay. So, you know, you've got to keep that insured and make sure you've got enough to cover that regardless of the forbearance, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So got okay. you know, you brought up a really interesting tidbit. If, if you're just having a little bit of trouble right now, uh, you can potentially call your mortgage company and cancel your escrows. Uh, that's something I never even thought about. You made me uh, think about that while you're talking. If your escrows, you know, right now, you might have four or 5,000 in the escrow account getting ready for insurance or taxes to be paid. Now, you don't want to miss your insurance payment because then they can force place you or it can cost you money, but you could cancel escrows. You get a nice fat check in the mail within 30 days. Uh, and then you just have, you know, have a little bit, of, a little bit lower mortgage payment, have a little bit of time to get back on your feet. And then, you know, with taxes, they're due in November, but they're really not late until March. Right. So, you know, yeah, that, that's good strategies, right? Yeah, definitely um, a good strategy. So what are you seeing that is new? Where are interest rates today? Kind of give me an update on all that stuff because I know it's changing, you know, minute yeah. by minute. 
So the market's still extremely volatile. The, the lenders are, are, are being conservative and they're, they're trying to, to regulate the amount of business that's coming in. So not only is the market volatile, which is pushing rates up, the lenders are trying to slow business by increasing interest rates as well. Um, they're still really, really good though. I mean, we just locked uh, 3.25% on a 30 for somebody, 2.875% on a 15. Um, biggest difference in rates right now is the lower rates actually cost a little bit of money to where back in the day they, they didn't really cost as much. Right. but they're still there. The point is you can still get a good long-term loan. Um, if, you're, if you're on the fence thinking about refinancing, get off the fence. Uh, Cindy and I know because of supply and demand, appraised values are high right now. You're in a good spot appraisal-wise. You're in a good spot interest rate-wise. The guidelines are not too tight to be able to get a lot of things done, and most people in America actually have equity right now. It's a really good time, so do it now. When this, when this whole tide changes, it's gonna change quick, and there's no reason rates should be this low. They're going to start coming back up as soon as things start to stabilize. As soon as you have a little bit of stability in the market, things are going to get very favorable. Um, so refi now if you're thinking about it. Rates are good. Talk to your bank or give us a call. Uh, you can go to 813mortgage.com or call, call us, 813mortgage. Um, the good news on programs, even though a lot of banks are tightening, especially on the government, the FHA and VA, we still have one underwriting team uh, who is still going down to uh, 500 credit score FHA and no minimum credit score VA still. Every single day I see a new bank tight. One of my favorite banks just tightened their guidelines from 620 to 680 this morning. If the loan wasn't locked, uh, everything else got canceled. I called that other lender that said, nope, we're still doing down to 500 on FHA. So it's out there. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. need it, 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 you can get it. What's really gone is the non-QM, like the bank statement lending and the stated income lending, that's gone temporarily. Jumbo, you have to put down 20%, but we have a great opportunity for people on Jumbo. Um, they can do as little as 10% down because we actually have a combo mortgage. They can do 510,000 on the conventional first mortgage and do whatever they need on the second mortgage and only put 10% down and, and they stay at a PMI and they stay out of Jumbo territory. So we've got some really cool options there. You know, every time something disappears, something new pops up. This is America, we're a capitalistic society. People see opportunity and they decide, you know, to do, do new things, new products. And, and we're, we're seeing that. So there's definitely some positivity out there. Uh, get off the fence is my big line for everybody. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. And I appreciate that you're someone that has, you know, we can always count on multiple options and solutions for people as we work across from first time home buyer to veterans to you know, waterfront homes in the jumbo market and vacation rentals. And so, you know, all those things, you're a real asset. And I appreciate the opportunity to just get some updated information. Um, and, you know, the one thing that comes up for me is that we have not yet seen an impact. Like you said, values are still high. Uh, people that are in the market are, there's still a demand. There's still multiple offers. Um, yes. The... But my thought is, I believe that, that, that if people are thinking about this today and, and they're thinking maybe in a month or two that I'm going to refi, I'm going to see how it goes or I'm going to do whatever. Uh, my, my concern for waiting right now, honestly, is that the, I imagine the people that hit the market first to sell are people that have been potentially impacted and so they need to sell and are going to price aggressively. You know, what we've seen over the last two years is sellers team to, you know, they don't want to leave any money on the table. So they kind of price it a little high and the market's been rising. So I think that, you know, while I'm, while I haven't seen anything to like scare me or worry me, just common sense says we know that they're expecting 60 million people to be unemployed when the numbers come out in the next month, just because all of us were told we can't go to work. I mean, it's, it's, right. you know, it's going to balance. It's not real unemployment. Right. 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 But there are some people who are going to find themselves, you know, that have a second home or maybe have a vacation rental and maybe we're counting on that income that just, you know, have a need to get that off their books. And so I just really would encourage people that, um, you know, if it's something that you see in the next two to three months, you know, you should really get the information now. And cause my biggest, my biggest thought and concern for people is this, not that you can't still help them, but let's say that you're at, um, you know, whatever it is that you need, but, but we, we could see the market 
take a temporary 10% down or something adjustment. And then, you know, as the demand refills and kind of balances out, but you know, the thing about appraisals that I always tell people and, and you and I have, you know, I have a love hate relationship with them because it's, it's really the, um, it's the pawn shop price for the bank. So it's not what a buyer and seller, the bank is going to be conservative because like you said, they're the one holding the asset. And yep. so we got to, you know, and also they're going to look six months back. So even if we have this, you know, even if we were to have a, a one or two month, you know, they're going to be watching to see, are we really out? I mean, again, when we saw in the past that tended to be, so I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic, but I also want people to know that, now would be the time to take positive action. Just like you said, some strategies of if you have a home equity loan, you might want to take some of that cash and park it. You can always put it back in, but you've always. got it at your access. If you're thinking about refinancing, um, you know, then you're going to be able to probably get the most out if you do it now. Um, I, would, I would argue that prices I don't see them jumping up in the near future. So I, I don't, I think we can be level. I think we can work through this, you know, but I think there's going to be some balancing in it. And so again, in your best case, I think now is, you know, again, a better time than not. And then if you're, um, if you're someone that needs help with any of these, uh, you know, we can help direct you whether Frank offers it or we both know people that can do a good job. We can get you with the right resources. So. Right. Nope, there you go. It came back. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, thank you for that update. Is there anything else that you're thinking of that you're seeing right now in the mortgage market that people should be aware of? Or, you know, I do know that you've got, you're helping one of our buyers and um, they are, went under contract during um, this virus. They uh, have a, a, a rental, you know, they're in a rental, they're renting and, they, and it expires in June. So they had to, they didn't want to lose a whole nother year in a rental. And, um, and they had been really thoughtfully looking uh, we actually went to one house that came on the market. We were able to negotiate uh, an acceptable offer, the buyer and seller, and we're moving through that process. And um, so I, I, I'm with you. I mean, I still have people that are interested for their own reasons. There are people that really need to buy and really need to sell, and, and we're both able to help them. And so I want people to know that too, that if you're somebody who, you know, is in that situation for a lot of reasons, uh, it's still possible, you know, uh, I actually did virtual 3D, 360 photos for them to be able to look and see the house after because, because we, we went in, you know, gloved up and secure, but you can't really, you know, you're buying a big house. You want to think, where's my furniture going? What did that look like? I mean, right. So we've all adapted to make that all happen. Obviously, we're virtually capable to hold consultations like this, to meet with people. So, you know, that's all going on. And, uh, I just want people to know that that, 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 that that's not something you have to worry about. But if you see some, a house that's going to fit your needs and you want to move forward on a purchase, those things are all happening. And it may be one of the best opportunities just from, like you said, because the market's been so competitive, what I'm seeing is buyers have a little edge right now because some people are, you know, maybe their job or other things are a little uncertain. And so if you know, for instance, you want to live in an old Northeast neighborhood and a house comes up, I mean, that's probably still going to be popular six months, a year, five years from now, you know? So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I agree. I'm seeing the same thing as you. And I, I, I tell people, I really encourage them get off the fence now because there's a lot of people at home shopping uh, on right. the internet and, and they're itching to get out. Uh, and I'm, I'm seeing a major uptick in applications coming from the Northeast right now. A lot of these harder hit areas with the virus and everything, people are, are wanting to get out of there. Yeah. Uh, just like when you have uh, major snowstorms in the Northeast, it pr uh, prompts an influx of buyers coming down into Florida. I mean, we live in paradise. You sell paradise. There's a lot of people sitting in, in their apartments up Northeast right now are saying, I'm getting the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah um, so, you're absolutely right. And Florida was already the number one state for people moving to it every day before this. And right. so I think that's definitely, we're just going to see more of that. Well, I always appreciate the way that you are a resource to Jack and I and our team, the way you take care of our clients and the way you bring us really good information. So we'll probably check back in with you. But again, thank you for taking time to, to give us an update today and uh, look forward to sharing it with the people that we have. And, and so have a great day. My pleasure. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks, Cindy. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.